Mumbai. Bombay, acquired in 1668, soon became the hub of not only political activity but also the centre of commercial and cultural activities. The opening of new schools and colleges provided better education facilities. All types of performing arts, dance, music, drama witnessed all-round development. New form of writing developed and there was a great spurt in the field of literature. New varieties of painting developed and architecture touched new heights. We still find a large number of architectural structures in Bombay which remind us of the old days of the colonial rulers. They all are made in the Indo-European style because they depict a combination of features of European and Indian architecture. The Victoria Terminus The Victoria Terminus, now known as Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, was built in 1888. It was named after Queen Victoria, the then ruler of Great Britain. It was designed by the famous British architect F. W. Starus. It took almost 10 years from 1878 to 88 to build and complete the majestic terminus. This terminus is the westernmost end point to the Central Railway of India. Victoria Terminus was renamed Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus on March 4, 1996. It was put on the UNESCO World Heritage List on July 2, 2004. Prince of Wales Museum The Prince of Wales Museum, now called Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalai, is located in the heart of South Bombay near the Gateway of India. It was set up in the early years of the 20th century to commemorate the visit of the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII of the United Kingdom. George Wiltet, one of the great architects and engineers of his time, was commissioned to design the building in 1909. It was completed in 1915. The architecture of the museum is a combination of several architectural elements. The museum houses rare and ancient exhibits of Indian history as well as objects from foreign lands. The Gateway of India Near the Prince of Wales Museum stands the famous Gateway of India facing the glittering waters of the ocean. It was completed by George Wiltet and his friend John Begg. The Gateway of India was built to commemorate the visit of George V and Queen Mary for the Darbar at Delhi in 1911. Other Buildings of Mumbai or Bombay other buildings which still stand as major landmarks in Mumbai are the General Post Office, Municipal Corporation, Rajabhai Tar, Bombay University, Elphinstone College, the Crawford Market, the Old Secretariat, Public Works Department, etc. All these buildings were constructed in the later half of the 19th century and the early 20th century. Madras or modern Chennai was constructed on the land acquired by the English in 1639 from the local Raja. Soon it developed into a flourishing town and in 1658 it was raised to the rank of a presidency. It developed into a vast city and became a hub of not only political activities but also developed into a great centre of economic and cultural pursuits. All sorts of art forms of the South as well as music and dance are cherished and nurtured in this city. Though industrialized, the city continues to be traditional and conventional in many ways. A great many grand buildings were constructed here in the later 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Fort St. George Fort St. George is the first British fortress in India built in 1639 in the coastal city of Madras. Around this evolved the city of Madras. Soon it became the hub of mercantile activity. The fort provided the impetus for further settlements. 
it also helped in establishing British influence over the Carnatic region. Fort St. George is one of the buildings which are functional even now. It houses the Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly and Secretariat. The fort has the country's latest flagstaff at a height of 150 feet. Tipu Sultan's carvings still decorate the ramparts of the fort's museum. George Tower It is situated north and south of the port of Chennai. It was a place where dockyard workers and the manual labourers used to live. It is now a commercial centre. The War Memorial The War Memorial, which is situated to the south of the Fort St. George, is a graceful building. It was built in 1939 in memory of the warriors who sacrificed their lives during the First World War. The High Court the High Court of Chennai, built in 1892, is believed to be the second largest judicial complex in the world, after London's judicial complex. Its decorative domes and corridors are best examples of Indo-European architecture. St. Thomas Cathedral and Basilica It is at the southern end of Marina Beach and was made in honour of St. Thomas, an Apostle of the Christ. He is said to have visited this part of the country in about 52 AD. The beautiful stained glass window at the Basilica portrays the story of St. Thomas. Its central hall has 14 wooden plaques depicting scenes from the last days of Christ. In the cathedral is a three feet high statue of Virgin Mary, which is believed to have been brought from Portugal. Other Buildings of the Colonial Period in Chennai other buildings of the colonial period in Chennai are Presidency College, built in 1840, the Chennai Central Station in 1873, the Ripon Building, 1913, the Southern Railway Headquarters, 1922, etc. These are some of the best examples of Indo-European style of architecture.